Good day, everybody, and welcome to the final webinar of 2010. I'd like to proudly present Sensei Nick Doherty as he compares your martial arts business to the three phases of the game. And by the game, he means football. If you, if you know Sensei Nick, you know that Sensei Nick is an avid football fan. And you also should know that football also has some of the best coaching in any sport. So it's going to be an interesting webinar today, and I hope you take great notes. I'm going to pass it over to Sensei Nick. Okay, Tatis, thank you so much. Uh, first of all, I just wanted to give a big round of applause. Tatis has been you know, uh, with me for every single webinar this year, Tatis. It was great working with you, along with Vahid, the rest of the marketing team at Champions Way. But uh, me and Tatis have been really uh, getting all these presentations ready. So Tatis, thank you so much for all your help over the past year. Um, I'm really excited about today's webinar. Uh, you know, have been talking so much about social media, social media, social media. Um, and this is like uh, more of like my passion. Um, so I'm really excited to just give you some examples of uh, how football, you know, how you can relate it to your martial arts school. So I think this will help, help uh, put, you know, everybody, in just, you know, give them a good perspective on just some really key points I wanted to bring out. All right, and uh, we're going to go right into it. So three phases of the game. A little bit about first, about Champions Way and Perfect Mind before we get started. Uh, we always like to tell everybody a little bit about our company. We were founded in 1998 by Master Fareed Dordar. We currently serve over 5,000 martial arts schools and yoga studios and small businesses. We employ over 60 people. We have our headquarters in Vancouver, British Columbia. If you ever would like to come for a visit, I highly recommend it. Uh, it was really a life-changing experience for me. I just couldn't believe it when I got there. Um, so it was just an amazing, amazing trip. And now I'm fortunate enough to work with them. And also, um, just it was a great time to see like what those guys do and how hard they're working. That was the one thing that really attracted me to Champions Way was those guys, were, everybody there, the entire team, they're all giving 100%. So if you ever would like a trip, to, you know, take a look and contact uh, one of the, one of the uh, I would say the marketing director, Vahid Shababi, about that. We have an office located in New Jersey. If you ever want to come see me, that's where I'm at. All right, so if you want to come out there. Uh, for those of you, I know a lot of you have been following us. And, uh, you know, help us get to our 2,000th Facebook fan today. If you're not a fan of ours on Facebook, go to facebook.com slash championswavefans. Uh, we've grown over, I think, 300% this year on our basic fan page, which has been a tremendous. And we're, we're, you know, we're providing a lot of content out there for small business owners. Twitter.com slash championsway. The piece is the man behind Twitter. All right, you're doing an amazing job keeping everybody up to date with all the great Champions Way events and Perfect Mind events. Uh, also, our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash championswayinc. We also have our blog, blog.championsway.com. And we have the world's largest martial arts online community at community at championsway.com. So let's go over first the meeting agenda for, for today. It's really simple. Nothing too, not too much. I wanted to end of the year with uh, just a really good you know, vision for you to understand what you should be concentrating, uh, concentrating on for your martial arts school or yoga school or whatever business you're in. Uh, but anyway, offense, we're going to be going over your offense. What is your offense? Okay, What is your defense? What is your special teams? Do you see the future? And then I'm going to give you a recommendation. So really simple, and let's just go right into it. Um, first, let's start with the offense. Okay, And, you know, I have to, I'm sorry you know, for any Giants fans or any other fans besides the Eagles, but for those of you that know me, I'm a die-hard Eagles fan. All right, that is my team. I've loved them since 1980, okay? When they were in the Super Bowl and I was growing up in South Philadelphia and I was listening to them on one of those small televisions with a knob, uh, showing my age a little bit, but, yeah, I was, I'm a, a pure Eagles fan. And, uh, you know, this is, uh, for those of you who don't know, this is Shady McCoy, a big part of the Philadelphia offense. Uh, I don't have to tell anybody who that is, especially Giants fans. All right, um, that is Deshaun Jackson. And then we have Jeremy Macklin. So the reason why I have these pictures up here, you know, of these players is simple. is because the, that, is, that is the offense, okay? That is, that is the offense, okay? Your players. Hold on one second, guys. I'm sorry. There must have been some type of difficulty. Okay, can everybody hear me okay now? Okay, sorry, sorry about that, guys. All right, sorry. Okay. So the DC, I'm just going to start back where, where it's uh, on the offense. Is that okay? Did, is that where I lost everybody? Okay. Sorry about that uh, little 
you know, technology issue. <laughs> anyway, let's go over. We're talking about offense. So, for those who don't know, this is uh, Shady McCoy. He's the Eagles running back. All right. And then, like I said, um, not to rub it in the Giants fan's face, but if you're a Giants fan, you know who this is. Okay. This is the guy who ended your season. No, I'm just kidding. This is the guy who made the most amazing punt return of the decade and you know, led us to victory on Sunday, which was, it was a, uh, an amazing punt return. And then, obviously, this is Jeremy Macklin, another one of our offensive players. Now, the reason why I have him up there, for a couple reasons, uh, your offense, okay, that is, those are your playmakers, okay, for your martial arts school. But before we go over the analogy, let's talk about what it takes uh, for an offense in the NFL, okay, the 10 key things of having, you know, an offense that will ignite the scoreboard. So the first thing is planning. The second thing is catching your opponent off guard. The third thing is having a bench. Right? If you notice, I don't know if anyone really uh, is a big NFL fan, but the Jacksonville Jaguars, okay, there's only, I believe, 32 players on a team, and 16 of their players are on the injured reserve. So it is, it, injuries are so much a part of it, and it's so important to have a strong bench. Right? Because if you have a left tackle, all right, or a right tackle or a center that uh, is just levels below your starter, it can be devastating no matter even if you're Tom Brady. Uh, the next thing also would be your scheme. You hear coaches talk about this all the time. You know, our scheme, our scheme. Okay, what's our scheme? Let's stick with the scheme, okay? So you want to make sure that you, know, you understand that that is a really big part of it. Adjustments, right? Adjustments that you're making for during an NFL game. All right, do you make adjustments during an NFL game? You know, or do you just wait till the game's over? Uh, you might hear this from the Patriots a lot. Uh, Bill Belichick will never talk about anything except the game that is, uh, that is coming up. All right, a legendary coach. He's always talking about one game at a time. Uh, you, you could ask him when they're 9-0, and Coach, do you think their chances of making the Super Bowl are really good? The only thing I'm worried about this week is the Pittsburgh Steelers. All right, you talk to any player on his team, they would say the same exact thing. All right? And we'll come back to that, how important that is. Film. Okay? These players, the most successful players, they study film like more than anybody. It's, uh, it's amazing. Some of these amazing players, Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, if you look at them, they all have one common denominator. They all study film. Interesting enough, Michael Vick, you know, who was a tremendous athlete, really credits everything this year to the way that he's preparing for games by watching film. The other thing with the offense is that there needs to be a system. If you notice the West Coast offense, which is what the Philadelphia Eagles use, okay, and a lot of other teams in the NFL, they have an offensive system that they use. When one player goes down, there is there really is not much of a drop off, okay? There, you know, they, they can plug another person in, and they run off of a system. Okay, you you understand where I'm going with that? Recruiting, all right? You know, uh, the NFL drafts, okay? These scouts, these people are spending millions of dollars going out. And looking into everything from character, all right, teamwork, history, the upbringings of the players, the adversity they've had to come through. They're looking at all these different factors before they draft a player. And then finally, personalities. Okay, will this will this person get along with our team? Does this person have the right personality fit for our team? So that's the ten keys to the offense. Now let's go over what it, let's go over the comparison. Okay, so planning. Now, for your martial arts school, all right, your class outlines for the week. How many people actually have a class outline? All right, now, when I say a class outline, it's a, I feel bad. I really, you know, should uh, spend more time in making one uh, for, the, for this meeting. But a class outline, I'm not talking about, like, a j jotting down a couple things on a piece of paper. I'm talking about a six-page, a six-page, okay, outline for every single program that you offer, okay, what you're going to be teaching, what are the exercises, was it reviewed with the rest of the team on a Monday? Does everybody know what the game plan is? All right, that's a game plan. If you look at Andy Reid, if you look at NFL coaches, okay, if you look at some of the best, did you ever notice the white uh, paper that's like laminated? All right, those people are prepared. Those coaches are prepared. Are you prepared? All right, do you are your are your is your like do you have an instructor playbook? Do you have a warm up playbook for your classes, or are you doing the same warm up every single day? All right, just changing it up barely. All right. Catching your opponent off guard. All right, the analogy I'm going to give you with this is the internet. All right, I can tell you firsthand, all right, that if you're looking to catch your opponent off guard, the way you're going to do it right now is with the internet. We will come back to that. Bench. 
If you don't have backup staff, okay, you're, you're only one instructor away from having total devastation in your school. All right, if you have one instructor and you're not developing someone else, as soon as that person, person leaves, okay, it's going to be a very difficult for you. I've gone through that more than anybody, you, and then, you know, 15 years in the business. I've had so many people come and go, and I'm always, always, I have, I have way more pay, uh, staff than I need, way more payroll than I need, because I'm not going to run my business if one guy leaves, then I'm, I have to do everything myself. So I'm always grooming someone. I always have more, okay? I'm investing into my business for that, just in case something happens. Very few people do that, all right? They have one head instructor, all right? They're not developing anybody else, all right? You need to pay people right. You need to have a bench. Scheme, overall strategy for the week, defining your goals, okay? And it sounds so simple, but very few of us do it. I've spent the past, you know, uh, I'd say two weeks having uh, one of our uh, employees here calling our schools that are members of the Champions Way Library, okay? And unfortunately, let me give you some statistics, okay? 30% of them, okay, there's, and I'm not going to mention the numbers, how many, all right? 30% of them, okay, we called, were not open at 12 o'clock in the afternoon. They were not open at 12 o'clock in the afternoon, all right? Uh, there was actually about 15 of them that we called that their answering machine was beyond outdated. It was talking about Thanksgiving. It was talking about, uh, you know, summer camp. All right. Uh, these are just something I have on a piece of paper right here. Okay. The other thing too. Here's an interesting one. All right. Uh, half half of the schools that we've talked to when we're calling them during the day. All right. We asked them what their game plan was for the new year. They were just taking off. They were taking off for the new year. All right. And I, I don't agree with that. I don't think this is the time to take off. I understand everybody needs a break. Okay. But for two weeks, that's a little bit too much. You should be in your school at least one of those weeks, scheming, planning, preparing. All right. What is the strategy? What is your? What are you doing for the new year? All right. Uh, and, and if you're not doing that, okay, I want you to really think about it. Okay. It's okay to take a week off. I'm not saying not to take off. But for two weeks to close your school and not be there at all and say you need a break, I, I'm sorry. I just don't think this is the really the best time to do that. All right. You know, you're getting ready for a new year. Okay, the summertime that would be a much better time. So just you know, I mean, the thing is, one thing in common, most of these schools I'm talking about less than 100 students. Okay, so adjustments. Uh, when we talk about adjustments for a football team, having weekly, daily meetings with your staff. If you don't make adjustments to be an NF, uh, a Super Bowl caliber team at halftime, you don't make adjustments when the game's over. Okay, you make adjustments immediately. Okay, that's what you need to do. If you see that a team is doing something, you don't just keep going until halftime and say, oh, we'll worry about it then. Okay, that's one thing that's really interesting. One of my friends one time said, well, this was when Jimmy Johnson was the coach, uh, the defensive coordinator of the Eagles, and he was just like, he goes, oh, we'll be okay. You know, Jimmy Johnson makes those great halftime adjustments. And I said, halftime? I said, you know, I said, my friend's name is Bob. I said, Bob, he doesn't make halftime adjustments. He's making adjustments in between. Why do you think they're looking at pictures? What do you think they're doing on the sideline? They're not resting. Okay. So it's the same thing with your school. Are you going to wait until you're having a bad month to say, well, we better start getting on the marketing, okay? That's how you go out of business if you do it like that, all right? If you're by Thursday and you have no appointments booked, okay, or even Monday, really every day, you should be on top of this, making sure that you're on top of it, having those daily meetings with your staff, making the adjustments that you need to have. Moving on, one game at a time, one class at a time, okay? You teach every class like it's your last class. Like it's your best class, okay? Don't worry about what you're teaching next month, all right? Worry about the particular class at hand. Is the SWAT team organized? Does everybody know the game plan? Is everybody on the same page? Do, do, are we able to communicate without talking, all right? These are all the things I did, you know, when I had, I believe, one of the largest children's programs in the country. I had so many different instructors. I have slowed down. I'm not in my school. I teach four classes a week, okay? And, uh, you know, this is, this, this is what I did. I focused on one class at a time, having communication, having signals, letting people know who needs to be renewed, who needs to be upgraded. We That's a, that's how we did it. All right, we ran our school. We were on top of it. I took care of the mat. Other instructors take care of the mat. This person will know who's weak. We knew who was going to quit. If you don't know, we'll come back to that in a second, who's going to quit. Film, research, okay? Um, I was very, very impressed, okay, with our social media course. We had tons of registrants, okay, that registered for our free social media course. Okay, now, can anybody uh, take a guess, out of all the people that registered, 
how many people actually followed through, went through with it, watched the videos, and took the examination. Okay? Thanks, Derek. I appreciate that. What percentage of people out of all of them do you think actually went through and did the exam and did the course? Close, Derek. 30%. 30% of people took advantage of a free course, okay, that is going to save your business. Now, I'm, I'm serious, okay? Let, let me explain that again. 30% of the people that registered, okay, went through, took the course on something that's going to save your business. And we're going to talk about that later, okay? It might not be a huge part of it. It might not be the only part of it, but it's a, it, I'm sorry, I would say, it's safe to say it's a major part of it, okay? And that is the, what is going to be happening in the future, which I will be talking about later in the presentation. So if you're not researching, okay, if you're not, you know, going over, and that research doesn't have to be about social media, which the course was about. Research could be about the way you're teaching classes, classroom drills, going on, networking, looking to other instructors, who has better ideas than me, who's got different marketing ideas. Are you on the phone talking to different school owners? What are you doing? Okay, are you talking to your parents? All right, are you getting data from your parents about your classes? All right, that, that's research, okay? Going online and, and looking at things that have really nothing to do that make your school better, okay? Uh, or trying to show me different ideas that really are not going to benefit your business is a waste of time. All right, I mean, it's great, but, you know, focus on your business, okay? System. Offensive, offenses, uh, great offenses have great systems. Okay, do you have a great belt system? Do you have a great enrollment system? Do you have a great retention system? And, you know, we, we've been talking about that for years, and it's been regurgitated uh, information about systems, okay? But, you know, it is still a part of it, of having that system. Do you have that in place? Recruiting, staff recruiting and development. We talked about that, okay? What do you do to recruit staff, okay? I've taken people from dishwashers and turned them into head instructors. I've taken people from, you know, working at Champ Sports into school owners, okay? I'm always, I was always looking for people in martial arts schools, okay, to teach, to train, you know, as an instructor. Everywhere I went, I was always recruiting. All right, waiters, okay? If I saw someone with a good personality, why don't you come in and try martial arts? Give them a card, all right? If not, if you're waiting for them to walk through the front door, okay, you might as well close it because it's never going to, they're not going to walk through, all right? They're not going to walk through. So it's got to be part of your, your, your offensive game plan, recruiting and development. And then teamwork, okay, personalities. All right, one of the most difficult things to deal with when you have a large team, if you have a five, 600 person school, 200 person school, and you start having a lot of people, all right, people, you know, everybody's raised differently, okay? Everybody comes from a diff different heritage. Everybody comes from a different place, all right? You know, it's, it's, it takes time to gel. It's the same thing with the NFL. They do a lot of team building exercises. They do a lot of things. They do community outreach programs together. That's the kind of that's why it's it's important to get involved with your community and working with your other your know, team members. Okay, this these are the keys of having a good offense at your school, your classes and all the other two things I talked about. All these small things. Moving on, defense. So, can anybody tell me who that is? Anybody could tell me who that is right there. I'll give you five seconds. One, two, three, four. Thank you, Chris. That's right. Darrell Rebus is a shutdown corner. Okay? Maybe he's been injured this year, but this guy, they call him Rebus Island. Okay? Because when people actually go out there and try to play him, they're like on an island. There's no getting off. You can't get off of him. All right? You're stuck. All right? He's going to blanket you, and you're done. He is a shutdown corner. Now, I want to talk about, you'll see where I'm going with this in a second. How about that? Is anybody who this is? I can't pronounce his first name. Give me his last name. Five seconds. He's a rookie. There you go, Chris, all right? It's actually S-U-H, okay? Sue, there you go, all right? This guy is an offense, I'm sorry, a defensive tackle, okay? He's a defensive tackle. Now, what's important with a defensive tackle is that's where the trenches are, okay? The battles on NFL games are won in the trenches. It's the same thing with your martial arts school, okay? The battle is won in the trenches, getting in, getting dirty, okay? Not just waiting for people to come through your door, getting on the phone, go ha having your goals, all right, being in the trenches, not working from your cell phone. Uh, and uh, if anybody takes offense to this, I'm sorry, okay, but working from your house, okay, right, you know, getting your cell phone, uh, you know, that's it's not the way to do it. You need to be in your school, okay? It will not be the same. Your school needs to be open, all right? People are driving by looking through a window, okay? That's not good, all right? So it's done in the trenches. Okay, well, everyone should know who this is, okay, because his name's on his helmet. This is Patrick Willis. He's the middle linebacker for the 49ers, okay? 
the middle linebacker's job on defense is to communicate, okay, unless you're a strong safety, with the rest of the team. All right, and that's kind of like the defensive coordinator slash, you know, yourself, school owner. Okay, it's your job to communicate with the rest of the cornerbacks and the people that are in the trenches, okay, as far as retention. Okay, if you don't know who's going to quit in your school right now, okay, then you know what? You really should go through our business basis course, all right, because you know right away, okay, when someone's going to quit. You know, you do. You look at their attendance card and you know when they're going to quit. So let's talk about the shutdown corner. The shutdown in your corner is someone in your school that will not let people quit. Okay? They are a great person to help people from prevent them from quitting. All right? They can talk, they can communicate, they can find out why they want to quit. All right? They also are good at preventing them to quit before they want to quit. All right? When you see someone's getting weak, you don't wait for them to be missed two weeks of classes. All right? It's like the shutdown corner. Darrell Rebus is a great athlete. You don't think he watches film on Randy Moss? You don't think he knows what Randy Moss is going to do? Of course he does. All right. So if you if you don't have a shutdown corner in your school, it's because they don't have the right preparation. They don't know who's going to quit. All right. They're, you have no attendance tracking. You're not sure about those things. The leader in the middle of the defense is communicating with the rest of the team. That's your job. Okay. Communicating with the rest of the team, letting them know, putting them in the position where they need to be. We need a makeup class. We need to do something for the brown belt group. We need to do something for this. It's just, it's 24/7 on this stuff. The battles are won in your trenches. We talked about that. Making your absent calls, okay, and check-in calls, and knowing your status, okay, doing your lead calls. All right, that's part of it too. I mean, you know, I know it's hard, but it's, it's painful, but you got to be consistent with it. You can't do it one day, all right, and then stop doing it. You know, networking with other people in your community. All right, I'm not even at my school, and I have a woman emailing me 35 times a day, and all she wants to do is get me students. And I'm just great. Sounds good. Awesome. I get back to her instantly on my on my iPhone, on my email. I'm constantly communicating with her. All right. Hooked her up with some deals. She's happy. Some sweatshirts, and she is bringing people in my door. Okay. And I'm doing that from a distance. Game plan from the coordinator. Okay. Uh, the game, the defensive, you uh, know, uh, coordinator. Okay. You. All right. You're the one that has to come up with the game plan. All right. They're the players. Okay. That's the mistake, okay? Players play for you because you're the coach, all right? Instructors work for you because you're the instructor and you're the owner. It's okay to give them responsibility, but the game plan is down to you. When it's a failure, it's your failure. It's not theirs. Unless you give them everything, a detailed task list, they have the game plan, they know what to do, that's how, that's how they'll be successful. Communication, front desk, instructors, program director, and perfect mind, okay? Having the software... Having something that is actually you know tracking everything you're doing, not allowing any points, no cancellations. Okay, these are the comparisons. Okay, uh, the shutdown corner, not allowing any points means no cancellations, not letting people quit. Okay, finding out what it is. I mean, yeah, of course you're gonna have people quit. I'm not saying you know whatever, but you gotta. I mean, it's, you're never gonna grow if you don't take care of that. No stupid mistakes. Be accountable. Know the status of every student. Know the status of every single student. If you know the status of every single student and you don't make dumb mistakes like being 15 minutes late for a class, being uh, all different types of things like that, all right, being accountable, holding your instructors accountable, all right, if the longer you let someone do something wrong, okay, the worse you're making it. it. You know how hard it is for me to come in here and talk to one of my instructors that gives 100% every single day and then he, you know, he has one little mishap, all right, I still have to sit down with him and explain to him that as long as he learns from it, I'm okay with it. As long as he can admit his mistakes, I'm okay with it. All right, but I'm not going to let it go. I've let it go in the past, and when you let it go, it's the worst thing you could do. You'll never, they'll never grow. Okay, they'll never grow, and your business won't grow. If they're not growing, how's your business going to grow? If you want to see growth, you need to look at a person. All right, when you look at a business, look at you know, look at the people that are in it. If they're growing, the business is growing. Film. Who's going to quit? You already know. It's the same thing. Like you, like NFL players watch the film. You need to watch your students. Okay, you know who's going to quit. You already know who's going to quit. Prevent them from quitting. Adjustments in the NFL. Okay, the similarity is getting feedback and improving. All right, when someone's talking about your class being too hard, something like that. Okay, you need to get the information and you need to make the adjustments immediately. Stats. Are you growing or shrinking? Without stats, you have no idea. If you not know your numbers, okay, then you're doing a disservice to your students as well. You need to know your students. 
need to know if you're growing every single month. Do you know what your goals are? I mean, all these basic things in Perfect Mind really help you out. Let's talk about my favorite special teams. Can anybody tell me who these two players are? Besides the I'm sorry, besides the Sean Jackson, who's number 23? Thank you, Chris. All right, Devin Hester is the he is the best punt returner, kickoff returner of all time. He's only been in the league a couple years. Already has the most punt and kickoff returns in the NFL. Okay, this guy is a difference maker. I think for those of you that play uh, watch football with me or uh, watch football, okay, would agree that if it wasn't for the Bears special teams, they are probably a very average team. Okay, this year they've gotten better. I'll give it to you. But Devin Hester has, has, has won games for them. Okay, when you know Kyle Orton and other players were doing nothing, this guy single-handedly would win games from amazing special teams play. Okay, uh, another special teams person right here, David Akers. Right, uh, the the thing that a lot of, the thing that happens a lot with the NFL. All right, if you hear the coaches, I watch NFL Network every day. All right, and when they're in the locker room afterwards, the coaches all say the same things when they win. Guys, we won because all three phases of the game were united. All three phases of the game, we won the battle. Okay, we won all the battles in all three phases of the game. Now, granted, sometimes you have an offense like Peyton Manning, and your defense isn't that great, and you win a game. Okay, but obviously with balance, okay, you're going to win a lot of games. With balance, you're going to have a successful business. Okay, so what does it take for special teams? Being ready for the trick play. Giving special teams as much attention as the offense and defense. Putting players in the right position. Dealing with pressure and taking risks. That is how you are successful when it comes to special teams. Let's relate that, uh, relate that to the martial arts business. Being ready for the trick play. Assume your competition is working as hard as you. I'll talk about this in a little bit. I've already talked about and explained to people what will be happening in the industry. Okay. And some people hear me, and some people don't. Some people uh, maybe haven't, I haven't heard it yet, but I will come back to this. Okay? But assume your competition is working just as hard as you, and be ready for what they're coming out with. Giving special teams as much attention as the offensive defense, just showing up to teach and keep your students is only two-thirds of the game. If you're just showing up and teaching, and teaching great classes, that's great. Okay? That's only two-thirds. There's still another phase of the game. Putting your players in the right position, Putting your marketing in the right position, right? Your marketing is the key, right? And a lot of people still just don't see what's going on. I'm sorry. Hopefully you're not one of them, okay? But I will be talking about it in a minute, and it's, it's some people just don't get it. And uh, <coughs> excuse me, a little under the weather today. We're gonna get back to that as well. Dealing with pressure. If you want to win, uh, if you want to win, get used to it. Okay, all right. Um, you know, pressure is something that you have to be able to deal with. It happens a lot. You're dealing with pressure a lot, and that's it. If you're looking to grow, uh, be used to dealing with pressure. Okay, uh, that's that. You know, you have to embrace pressure. You have to look at it as a challenge. You have to look at it as something going on in your life that you're going to get through. Okay, and you're going to deal with. All right. There's a lot of people that what they do is it's the opposite. And I've seen this. Okay, it's a shame. It really is a shame. There are school owners that do nothing of other. Then blame everybody else for why their school is successful. Now I understand about the economy, right? But when you you know when your you know, your school's not open, you don't come to any meetings, you're not doing anything to grow your business, and all you're doing is complaining. I don't know what magic you think is going to happen, but you're not just going to walk in and get ten enrollments, okay? You have to bust your hump to get those ten enrollments. You have to be out hustling all the time, working. I mean, there's a. I, I wish he was here today, Grandmaster Charfella. This guy, this guy, master, I mean, this he is should be like the client of the year. He works harder than anybody I've ever seen. <coughs> this guy is uh, on fire. So deal with pressure. If you want to win, get used to it, or sit on the sideline and, and warm the bench. Taking risks is how you win. All right. If I would have stayed where I was four years ago, I'd be dead. Okay, dead. All right. Um, you know that that's just the truth. I had to take a major risk in my life. And I wouldn't be doing this webinar for you guys if I did, okay, if I stayed where I was. I would not be doing this webinar today for you, okay? And that was something I had a very, very big decision and risk I took. And you know what? It took three to four years for it to pay off. When you take a risk, you don't see immediate results. You don't see just, you know, uh, you know, if you invest in an employee, okay? You know, yeah, okay, maybe, you know, you're not making that much money, okay? But if you don't get another person, you, you, 
maybe can't grow at all. So you have to take the hit. That is a risk. Okay. If you've done your homework and this is the right fit and this person needs to survive and you're doing okay and you can make money from doing some private lessons to offset that, then that's what you need to do. Okay. So can anybody tell me who this is? He's an NFL coach. And can anybody tell me who it is? Chris? Former NFL coach. Very good, Dave. That's right. Marty Schottenheimer. Okay? And you might, for those of you that listen to the NFL, it's called Marty Ball. Okay? Uh, coach Schottenheimer was one of the best NFL coaches. Dave, how many Super Bowl wins does he have? Or Chris, how many Super Bowl wins? Does, two or four? Debbie, four? Okay. The answer is none. He has no Super Bowl wins. Okay? Marty Ball, okay, is running the football, running the football, running the football. Okay? This coach has, I think, three or four titles, NFC or AFC titles, and he has no Super Bowls. Okay? And the reason why is because of Marty Ball. Because he did not adjust his game plan. This guy told you what he was going to do, all right? And he went out and tried to do it, and he never won the big game. He won a lot of games, but he never won the Super Bowl, okay? And uh, they just did a special on him on the NFL Network a couple days ago. Great coach, but lost, never could win the big game. Because even when he got to the big game, he didn't change his game plan, all right? It was, you know, his scheme, you know, just didn't win, all right? And, you know, he tried, and he never, never, I never even made it to a Super Bowl. He won the, the AFC uh, titles, never made it to the Super Bowl, all right, because of Marty Ball. All right, interesting. Can anybody tell me who this is? Five seconds. One, two, three, four. Close, Dave. This is Sean McDermott. Okay? Sean McDermott is the defensive coordinator for the Philadelphia Eagles. Okay? Sean McDermott, okay, lives at the Eagles practice facility Monday through Friday. He sleeps there every night during the NFL season. Okay? Because the thing is, guess what? This is a high-pressure job, all right? When you don't make the playoffs, you are fired, all right? So, you know, sometimes I, I wonder, like, you know, like people, you know, people talk about family. You want to spend time with your family. Okay, well, how does your family survive without money? How does your family survive if you can't afford to live, all right? So, uh, you know, sometimes like, I mean, people maybe not be working that hard. People might not be going all out, okay? All I'm trying to give you an example here is some of these guys, they are relentless, okay? There is a lot of pressure on these guys to win, all right? And if anything from this, maybe you step up your game a little bit and you see a little bit better results in 2011, all right? That might be the one thing you do. I'm not saying you need to work 24-7, right? But being open at 2 o'clock in the afternoon and expecting to grow, unless you're a part-time school, isn't going to happen. Getting there at 12 o'clock, not going to happen on a Monday, all right? You need to get into, you know, you want to try to go to that next level. Now, what this is is the link, the missing link. I'm not sure what the missing link is for you, whether it's your offense, your defense, or your special teams. Okay, but think about well, what it is. Think about what we talked about. This will be recorded. It will be, you will be able to watch this again. All right. Go through the different strategies that, strategies that I talked about. All right. And hopefully from here you can you know get that missing link and you can move forward. Okay. Now whether I said you know offense, defense, or special teams, figure out what that link is and, and improve. Now, what this is here, guys, this is an elephant, obviously sleeping. And what I'm trying to explain to you, what I'm going to leave off the web webinar with is this, all right? Um, I've always been a person that, you know, I've, I've seen, the, see, seen things happen before they've happened. One of the reasons why I took a major risk five years ago. I looked at something where I was, and I knew it wouldn't work. I knew there was no way that it would, I would ever be successful in the position I was in. I, I didn't believe in the plan. And I, once I believed in that, I decided to make a move. I knew there was no way I could stay long, be a part of this. I told you about the major risk that I took. I, I, you know, I, went, I just decided it was time to move on. All right? It cost me a lot of money. It cost me a lot of stress. Okay? But the thing was, now looking back on it, it was the best thing I ever did. All right? And so some of you, when I go over a couple things here at the end, you can understand what I'm talking about. Because I, what I'm going to talk about in a second is this isn't this isn't like you know a, this isn't a prediction, this isn't like um, a, a guess. Okay, this is reality. This is what's happening. Okay, and for people that are saying, well, you know, since Nick, you know, he's got good, he's got some good stuff, but you know, I don't know about that. I don't know about this. Please, I encourage you to do as much research as you can. 
if you want to, you know, go into like two, three hundred hours worth of it that I've already done on the topic, so go for it, okay? But if you disagree with me, I highly recommend going and looking because this is this is the best thing I could tell you to leave off 2010 with, right? Because this is the future, okay? For not only our business, but for all small businesses, all right? There's marketing has changed. You've already heard me talk about this, and I want to talk about what's going on. This is a visual representation of what's going on on Facebook or who's on Facebook. This is the United States. Okay. In other words, everybody's on Facebook. Everybody's on social media. And now, Twitter. Let's be realistic. All right. There's only uh, six percent of Americans are on Twitter, and out of them, forty percent of them have not been on Twitter. Okay, in over a month. So interesting, right? Interesting. But Facebook. The reality is, everybody's on there. Everybody is going towards social media, all right, for business, for research, to find out more about companies, to find out more about people, all right. And I want to break it down very simple for you, okay. If you look at Google, all right, you're going to type in the keywords, and it's already typing in, you know, um, you know, it, it's it's called Google Instant, all right, and it starts finishing the sentence for you. Pretty interesting, uh, you know, algorithm for search engines, all right. So you're typing in like you know uh, Sensei Nick, and you might see start, things will start coming up. Okay. Now if you go on Facebook, all right, you know Facebook uses what's known as a social graph. If you notice the big update on Facebook about the friends and about your family and about, about like if you watch the 60 minute special, Facebook is trying to connect people socially, people that have similar interests, people that are actually similar to you. That is the goal of Facebook. And if you think about it, isn't that what people want? Do I want to go onto a search engine and type something in that's going to direct me to something that has nothing to do with me? And that, yeah, okay, they made some changes. Okay, now you're looking on Google and it's it's you know it's, it's more geographical, all right, and you can see that it's particularly you know, for the zip code, all right. But Facebook is you know that's that's what they're doing. 500 million users. People are on Facebook more than Google, all right. So that's just going to lead into what I'm talking about next. If you didn't watch a lot of our social media, if you didn't go into our social media course. If you really, you know, just said, yeah, you know what, it's not really that big of a deal. I'm telling you now, okay, that this year, now you're going to see everybody else talking about it. We're already beyond that. We already have systems in place in our Champions Way library to show you everything you need to know about social media in our, cha our social media course that you can go through with exams, and I will show you this once this is over, okay? But guess what? That's all good, okay? But we've already wasted, or not wasted, we've already spent all of 2010 building our social reach so if you haven't done that that means you're now behind okay phase two of the evolution is social commerce okay and that is important to understand that now if you're building your social reach now great okay but if you still are denying it okay then you need to pay close attention 2010 you were building your social reach meaning that you're getting everybody online to follow you to build people to get people to follow you, to have people that were interested in you to interact, to engage, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, social site, all these different things. Okay. Now, if you were doing that and you have five, six hundred um, fans at least, okay, and you you understand what you're doing, you're putting out the right content. Okay. Now we're going towards social commerce. It means that from now we could drive people from our social networks to our website that is set up to sell the punch passes, the kickboxing specials. The introductory specials, okay? Now, if you haven't done that and you have no social reach, then you better get into our course. It's a free course. Get on there. Learn about how to do everything. Because here's my question. Even if you have a website with all that, okay, how are they getting there? How are they getting to your website? Okay, they'll go to Google. There, there you go. They'll type in. We have number one SEO. Great for you. Okay? But here's the problem. All right, now they go to your website they've never seen you before, and all they see is sign up for this, pay for that, buy that, buy this, Okay? The approach, okay, the scientific approach is using social media, okay, to tie to social commerce. If your social media is strong and you have good content consistently that people can go back and research, and then you drive them to your website, that's how you close them. That's how people buy. That's how people will become clients of yours, okay? So that this is this is not, you know, like I said, uh, an option anymore, okay? You will see, and a lot of our clients have already said to us, Sense Nick, I know someone's doing this now. I know someone's doing that now. Yep, they are. Okay, and you know, I'm sure more people are going to come out with it. They are. They're going to have all different types of things. So the thing is now, not only do you have to worry about Champions Way helping schools with their social pro presence, but now you're going to see everybody else following suit. Everyone else is going to be doing it. 
So what's going to happen is this, okay? And you can send me the email what happens to you. You're going to be in your school one day, and someone's going to come up to you and say, hey, uh, Sensei Nick, uh, or Sensei Bill, whatever your name is, okay? Um, interesting. Uh, I just got this thing it was uh, on Facebook. Have you seen uh, Have you seen uh, ABC Martial Arts? No. No. I, oh, actually, they, they asked me to become a fan. If I become a fan of theirs on Facebook, um, we actually get a 30-day trial. And, uh, you know, I, I've only been here for a week, and, um, you know, do you have anything like that? Okay, so when that happens to you, email me because it's going to happen. That will happen this year, all right? Because we know this is a copycat industry, all right? So that will happen. So keep in mind, this is not something that I'm, you know, this is something you need to be ready for. So with this diagram I have here, okay, your social reach in conjunction with having good content equals social media. I'm sorry, equals social commerce. That's how you drive people to social commerce. Now, if you have if you got social commerce here by itself, okay, and everyone's just looking at a website and they know nothing about your company, and they haven't been, you know, seen things, okay, on Facebook, remember, it's not gonna take them one time on Facebook. You guys remember this from the same regurgitated information you heard for the past fifteen years. It takes six or seven times from a marketing standpoint to hear someone before you're actually gonna buy from them. It's the same thing, okay? Now the only thing is we're delivering the message in a different way. We're not doing flyers because they're a waste of money. Okay, they get thrown out the next week. Right? We're not doing those old type of. Uh, we're not doing uh, the direct mail because no one reads it. All right? Are you really going to invest money on the radio? I mean, you know, with iPods and everybody not listening. All right. So think about the common sense behind it. All right. Okay. Moving on. So what I'm going to do, guys, now is uh, two things. First, uh, we're going to take some questions. Second, if anyone is interested to hang around, okay, I'm going to be doing two things. I will be showing everybody the social media course. And I see some, I recognize some names in here. And anybody who's taking place in the social media course, please send a little text message in the box and tell people what do you think, of, what do you thought about the course, whether or not it helped you. All right, I, I, I'm pretty sure it did. I know it did. So if you could leave a couple messages for them, thank you, Mr. Speranza. Um, and any after the questions, I'm going to take everybody through a tour of the course. Then I want to take everybody through our social media optimization package. Let's check it out. Look at it. See what we do. Ask some questions. Think about it, all right, and that's it. So let's start with the questions. We'll stop the recording afterwards, and then anyone who wants to sit through the tour, we're gonna. I'll go about 15 minutes. <coughs> Thank you, guys. Any questions at all, guys? Please type them in the box. If not, if you want to hang around, we're gonna go over the social media course and our social media optimization package through Champions Way. We do have one special for the month, okay? That will expire on Thursday. Right before the new year. So, if there's any questions, please. Dan, um, I would have to talk to your account manager on that one. I'm not sure if um, I'm not sure what's being built. Okay, but uh, Stan, we could talk about that, and we can make sure that it will be. So uh, we can talk about that later. Yes, it should be. Yes, Stan. Christina, very interesting. Uh, for those of you that understand what pay per click is, pay per click is. Um, you know, when you advertise on Facebook and you can do insights and you can get uh, you know, leads and so forth, Christine, the challenge with that is that you're not getting any type of, of leads that are, you know, because of the, the, your brand, okay? You're getting things that are, you know, people that are, um, you know, they're seeing cry, cry special, whatever. They're, the point is they're not as qualified as people that are getting from referrals, okay? So that's the difference. Uh, Pay-per-click is okay, but really building your social reach, that is the way to do it. The combination of both is the most effective, but building your social reach from content-driven material will be the best thing for you. Andre, does it cost anything to be part of it? The social media course is free, Andre. There's no cost to be part of that. Social media optimization does cost money, <coughs> but not the course. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, well, uh, we'll leave it open for another 30 seconds. If there's no more questions, then we will stop the recording, and if anybody wants to take a look at the course and also our social media optimization package, let me know. David, what we'll do with that is, um, if, you, if you could just be patient, uh, and if there's no more questions, what I'll do is I will actually um, go over everything we do for you as soon as the um, as soon as we stop it, if that works for you. Uh, Dennis, we are at our student capacity for our instructors. Where should we focus our attention to get more revenue? Uh, that's that's a great question, Dennis. Okay, um, the, I would be honest with you and say that you need more instructors. 
All right, think about it. If you, I mean, that, I mean, that, I know you don't want to hear that, but if you're at capacity with your instructors, maybe developing some more instructors in part one, you know, to get to handle more students. And uh, let me ask you a question, Dennis. I've heard people say that before too. We're on a we have a waiting list, okay? We can have. I, I think that's an absolute joke right, when someone tells me that. Um, that means that you have bad scheduling, okay? They, they, there's no way anyone today has a waiting list to make your schedule better. You can make adjustments, get more instructors. Or if you say that you were you're at 600 students, you cannot fit anybody, your total capacity, then I would focus on upgrades. That's what I would totally focus on having an upgraded program uh, where you're offering a little bit more, more uh, you know, something to them for, you know that's obviously spe more special, more uh, a specialty class, some sort of that, and then you could charge more money. That's that would be the only way. I mean, obviously, if you can't fit more people, you can't get more instructors, you can't more, more offer more classes. Okay. I always tried to focus on that as much as I could and wanted to be packed at the seams. That's what I tried to do is when I was uh, running my school. No worries, Dennis. Okay, guys. Well, if there's no other questions, what we'll do is we will stop the recording. And I'll give another 10 seconds for any more questions. And anybody who wants to hang around, we will be going over the social media course. Okay. Thank you, Richard. You too, sir. All right. And also our social media optimization package. For those of you guys that are leaving, thank you so much for your support uh, for Champions Way, and have a great 2011. Have a safe, happy, happy holiday. Thank you so much. Exams are done. Just waiting for Sensei John Malik to actually determine how we're going to be sending out all the information. Uh, Andy, how can I attend the course as I'm based in the UK and your hours don't suit me? Great question, Andy. Uh, the course has nothing to do with um, any time zones. All right, when you log into the course, you can go at it at your own pace, at your own time, and everything is recorded for the webinars, so that will not uh, that will matter for you as well. <clears throat> Thank you, David. Thanks, Debbie. Okay, guys, well, if there's no other questions, we're going to stop the recording. We're going to take a, <clears throat> excuse me, just a one-second um, one break, just so I can get a drink.